This example looks at circular motion and its relation to simple harmonic motion. So here's a question. A vintage record player has records that are 15 centimeters in radius and rotate at 33 and one third revolutions per minute. A point on the circumference of the record is at an angle of 0.2 pi at time t equals zero. What are its x and y coordinates as functions of time? So let's start by making a drawing. So here's our turntable and let's for good measure draw our x and y axes here. Okay, and so what do we know? Well, we know that the radius of our records is 15 centimeters. So 0 0.15 meters. Now we have a point here that's at um, an angle of 0 0.2 pi. Actually, I kind of prefer to write this as pi over five um, at t equals zero. And the question is, for that point, as it rotates around um, in its motion, what are the x and y coordinates um, as a function of time? Okay, so let's say that this is our point here. So we have this angle um, is theta. And so um, it's circular motion. And so we've seen a circular motion and simple harmonic motion are related. So that angle theta is changing over time. So theta is gonna be omega t plus phi, okay? And so we can easily construct the x and y coordinates um, for this point here. So the x coordinate is gonna be, well, just the x coordinate. The radius is r times the cosine of omega t plus phi. And similarly, the y coordinates are gonna be r times the sine of omega t. Plus phi. And so essentially all that we have to do is um, figure out um, what each of these parameters are. Also what we typically do when we express our um, coordinates as a function of a simple harmonic motion, we often prefer a cosine um, rather than a sine, but of course a sine and a cosine are the same thing, just uh, 90 degrees out of phase with each other. So this essentially is r times the cosine of omega t plus phi minus pi over two. So that's that phase um, difference. So what do we need to do? We need to determine omega, phi, and r essentially, right? So there's only three parameters to determine. Well, r, that's the radius. So this is gonna be 0 0.15 meters. Omega is the angular frequency that remains to be determined and phi also remains to be determined. And so let's start with the angular frequency. What is omega? Well, what's given is that they rotate at 33 and one third revolutions per minute. So what does that mean? Well, so one revolution means a rotation over two pi radians, right? And so if we have 33, and one third revolutions, we have 33 and one third times two pi radians that we turn over 60 seconds. And that of course is our angular frequency. That's uh, how many radians we turn per second. Okay, and so if you plug in those numbers, 209.4 divided by 60 seconds. And so this is 3.2. 49 per second. Okay, so that's our angular frequency omega. And so we have r, we have omega, the only thing to uh, left to determine is um, that phase angle phi. Okay, and so to determine that, we know that at t equals zero, theta is gonna be 0 0.2 pi. So let's say that at t equals zero, okay, what is theta gonna be? Well, theta is gonna be omega t plus phi, but we have t equals zero. So that actually is phi. And it's given that this is pi over five, right? It's 0 0.2 pi. And so that means essentially you find immediately that phi must be pi over five. Okay, so we can then write for x 
is 0 0.15 times the cosine of 3.49 times t plus pi over 5. Okay, and so for x, we're essentially done. For y, we can write 0 0.15 times the sine of 3.49t plus pi over phi, 5. But if we want to have this in cosine form, plus pi over 5, we need to subtract this phase difference pi over 2. And so we would find 0 0.15 times the cosine of 3.49t minus 3 pi over 10, because that's what you get if you work this out. Okay, and so that would then be the final answer. x is 0 0.15 times the cosine of 3.49t plus pi over 5 and y equals 0 0.15 times the cosine of 3.49t minus 3 pi over 10.